All right, guys, we're on a job, a restretch uh, situation. I'm walking into a room. Now, you have to understand, when we begin a restretching, you find out where the bubble is. So we're going to say that the bubble is right here. This bubble is going to be parallel to that wall. You want to stretch perpendicular to the bubbles. Now, you have to understand where the door, if the doorway is back over here, like if that is the doorway entering into the hallway, we don't want to stretch towards the door because we could cause a bubble and then we'd have to reseam that door. So always remember, when you come into a restretch, you're going to be pulling up the carpet on two sides, two walls. All right? So let's begin. Now I've pulled up the carpeting on this particular wall because the bubble that needs to be restretched is going parallel to this wall. Now we're ready to secure this tack stripping. We're on a project in a uh, basement of a household here, and we're going to show you now how to re-secure tack stripping. Uh, the majority of the time when you enter a job, the tack stripping is probably down. And what we want to do then is make sure the tack strip is secured appropriately to the substrate. In this situation, it's a concrete substrate. I would like to show you uh, first a tack stripping. This is a tack strip used for a wood substrate. It is a one inch wide by one inch nails. This is what we recommend. If you have a smaller tack stripping, as long as it's secure, it'll work. And here's how you would secure that. You would make sure that you secure it with a one inch long uh, re-nail. And uh, you just penetrate that in any of the areas that are weak. So in other words, if they move, the tack strip's not secure. You re-nail it, whatever's appropriate, you'll know. All right, let's get to this particular substrate. This uh, job here now has already this tack stripping, which is a tri-tack. The tri-tack comes with a, a concrete nail that's already inserted if you desire to purchase it this way. This is a 5 8 inch uh, nail. Now, these nails are spaced uh, 6 uh, to 8 inches apart. You try to secure that. If, you're, if you have an area that you need to put new tack stripping down, try to hammer these in the concrete. If they don't secure, then this is the process that you do. Now, you remember, I explained the tools required. This is the hex adapter. This hex adapter works with the double-sided carbide bit. This double-sided carbide bit and hex adapter fit inside of your hammer drill. So I've got the hammer drill all set up, and we're going to secure the tack stripping on a concrete floor. You set it and wherever, uh, wherever the tack strip is loose. This particular job, the tack strip is secure. I just want to show you how this works, though, if, if the tack strip were not secure. You position your hammer drill in a vertical position. You drill down into the concrete. You see the hammer drill cannot go past this point at the top of this hex adapter. So that's kind of the stop that's already uh, within the tool itself. Now, remember these are the aluminum drives. They're 5 8 inch long aluminum drives. So I'm going to take one aluminum drive, put it in the hole that I've drilled, and I'll take my hammer. There you go. This tack strip is not moving. Now, you may have to do this three or four times per tack stripping. It just depends upon uh, how loose the tack strip is on the existing job or whatever is appropriate for that particular concrete. All concretes are, seem to be different across the country. Some are softer, some are more hard. I know it sounds like an oxymoron, but uh, concrete isn't always hard. On a new construction, it's softer. You may have to use more aluminum drives. Um, in some areas, uh, you may just use two or three per piece of tack stripping. So now, we, uh, now we're going to go to our next demonstration, which would be the demonstration of the world's best carpet stretching tool, the Bear Claws. Now I'm ready to do an actual restretch with the Bear Claws. When you position your Bear Claws behind the carpeting, you fold the carpet back, you keep the handle of the power head in a vertical position. It allows more room for adjusting. You place the claws behind the tack stripping. I'll pull that away so the camera can see the tack stripping. The claws are behind the tack strip. Now listen, guys, if there's a bubble that is parallel to the wall, you want to stretch perpendicular to that bubble. So let's say that the bubble is starting right here and it extends behind me. You, wanna, you want to go above or beyond where that bubble begins to start your stretch. Now remember the adjustment on the bear claws that we did? 
When you lift up on your power head, every power head in the industry has some slop, okay? When you lift up, you should be able to float your head right above the carpeting. This is an appropriate adjustment right here. If, if, you, if you're thinking that you're going to try to stretch your carpet like this without pushing, you can't do it. This is the proper way. And the reason is if you want to do a small stretch, then you push down here. A bigger stretch, just move yourself back. But that's why the head is supposed to float above with, with assisting the head, okay? So now I'm going to make my stretch. I push on the power head. You do not push here. This handle is simply a support for the bear claws, and you use it for moving, which I'll explain in a moment. So you push down on the head of the, of the power head, the top of the power head, and you tuck your carpet. I'm doing it with my hands here. Remember the, the stair tool? This is what I prefer to use. You, you push down so that it hooks on the tack stripping. You lift up the power head. All right, now I've stretched the area of carpeting as wide as the power head is all the way across the room. I've taken this beginning of the bubble out. Now I have to work myself backwards. So when you adjust or move down the wall with the bear claws, you simply tilt. Do you see how I'm tilting the back end off the carpet here? And then my hand is on the crossbar, and I'm pulling it gently towards myself. Now, you want to pull far enough so that the area you've stretched, you're, you're actually doing a new area, but not too far so that you go past that area that you set. So this side of the bear claws should be right where you're, you've last set that carpeting. Now, remember again, you help the power head up. You adjust it to where you're going to do a stretch, push on the power head, and do another stretch. You secure your carpeting. If you do get a little bubble, I don't know if the camera can see there's a little bubble here, that bubble will release itself. You push down on the tack stripping, make sure that the carpet is secure. When I'm tucking, I'm not trying to tuck this carpet underneath the baseboard, guys. I'm just securing it on the tack stripping. When you are finished doing your restretch, that's when you finish tucking and you finish trimming. Tilt again, bring it to the next position. Again, I'm helping the head up. Now, if you try to take too big of a stretch here, guys, you're not going to even, you're, you're not going to pull you're going to probably rip through the carpet is what you'll do, all right? So you have to determine the size of stretch that's appropriate for your room, all right? So this would be a nice stretch for this bubble. The bubble's coming out as we go down the wall. Again, I'll tuck, set the carpet, and I'll slide it to the next position. In this room, we had a vent, and the vent is about 10 or 11 inches long, okay? Let's say the vent is right here. I don't really want to stretch right above that vent because what would happen then is the vent hole could be moved in the wrong position. So I want to come as close to the vent as I can without seeing that vent hole move out of position. So you've got to be careful when you come to that, that particular spot in your restretch. So let's say the vent is here now and the vent uh, hole has not moved out of position. I do this stretch. Now what I need to do is I need to slide the bear claws beyond the other end of the, uh, of the vent. All right? So now let's say the edge of the vent is, is right under here. I'm coming beyond it, and then I do the appropriate stretch again. Now I've not disturbed that hole for the vent. That's very important so that you don't you don't have to try to piece or, or uh, staple another piece of carpet in there. You can simply put the vent plate over and you're not gonna have a, you're not gonna have an issue. Tuck your carpet again and I'll slide it to the next position. Now listen, if you attempt to take the bear claws out and reposition it, it's gonna be a world of trouble. This tool was designed to slide back and forth. You see how easy it's sliding? It will not slide if you do not tilt the rear end of the bear claws. I'm doing it like this. Some you may want to just grab the handle and do the same thing. Next position, lift on the power head, get your appropriate bite in the carpet, push down, make your stretch, set your carpeting, and then down to the next position. It's as easy as that. Okay? Now, as you see, I've taken this bubble out all the way down. This bubble was going in a parallel direction to the wall. 
So I've stretched perpendicular, thus taking the entire bubble out. Now when you're, when you're down to a corner, I can move the bear claws all the way in. Now you could go on this side as well, if you like. Do my last stretch. Setting the carpet and pull the bear claws out. When you're completed doing your, uh, your restretch process, that's when you do your final tucking, your trimming. You could take your carpet knife or your t utility knife and make your cut here and do your final tucking. Now we have successfully restretched this particular bubble out of this room. Hi, my name is Jerry Bear. I would like to show you in this segment on how to do restretches or reinstalls in a room. So this is another additional training mechanism for you if you don't uh, already do restretches or reinstalls. Okay, let's look at this configuration right here. This would be a typical bedroom, all right, with furniture in the bedroom. You've already cleaned, let's say, for example, the basement. You've asked the customer, as we explained in the introduction, uh, whether... The, that customer needed another bubble taken out in the room. They brought you to this room right here, which is the master bedroom, let's say, okay? You walk into the door. Now, you've got, you've got furniture in the room. You can see a bed. There's some uh, nightstands here, maybe a dresser on this side. Perhaps there's a sitting table here, a TV, what have you, okay? When you do a restretch, you want to stretch to two walls. So you want to take the path of least resistance. If the bed and, the, and these nightstands are the heaviest in the room, and being that this is a closet, you don't want to mess with the closet unless there's bubbles inside of the closet, then you can take those bubbles out simply stretching this direction. All right, I can show you with the marker. There's some arrows. But typically, the closet isn't going to be bubbled. You're going to have a bubble going either one of two directions. You'll have bubbles going this direction or bubbles going this direction in the room. They're not going to be at an angle because the backing is manufactured at a 90. All right? So when you walk into the room, do not stretch towards the door. All right? Always the wall for sure that you know you're going to take up and verify that the tax strip is secure is always the wall opposite the door. So this wall here, you're going to take a pliers, you're going to lift the fiber, the pile, the carpet, you're going to pull it back a little bit, you're going to check that tack stripping, all right? Now, you want to stretch then to this wall or this wall. If there's more furniture here, leave it, leave that. So again, the path of least resistance. Take this dresser, scooch it in about four feet, move this table in about four feet, and chairs, all right? So now, what we're going to do is check the tack stripping on these two walls right here. After that's done, you start stretching from the set wall. This is called a set wall. That's a set wall. You're not touching it. It's already stretched to that point. You start with the bear claws up here. That's the bear claws, the U shape. You stretch, stretch, stretch. Okay, from three to five feet from this corner here, you're going to probably stop because you're going to experience some bubbles. The bubbles are going to be on the right-hand side of your bear claws, and then what you want to do is come back down to this point right here. You're doing perpendicular stretching up the wall. You're going to stop probably two or three feet to this end. What you've done now, if you, you've taken this bubble out, you've taken this bubble out, and all, the, all of the stretch is moving this direction, okay? And then you finish up this wall. You'll have no more uh, bubbles on the right-hand side. That, that um, slop will be taken up because of the stretching this direction. Finish up to the corner. Uh, do your trimming, move your furniture back, you're done with that room. Um, all you're doing is removing bubbles, okay? We're not trying to do a professional, mill-approved stretch in here. You're satisfying your customer because your customer will not pay $400 per bedroom to have you remove all the furniture, do the stretch, and move back in. If they do, all the power to you. But typically, it's a $75 to $125. That's the national standard per room to take bubbles out, and the bear claws will do it successfully with the furniture in the room using this uh, method. Now, let's go down to um, an original install or a reinstall. And in your situation, if you're a restore, it's going to be a reinstall. All right. So you've cleaned, you've already, you've already um, dried your carpeting, and it's laying in here. All righty. So what you want to do, because your carpet has already been pre-cut, you want to start right here. You set your carpet here. You're stretching this direction. That's